Battlefield 1 has got some major surprises up its sleeve. Today on GameRanks, here's 10 crazy yet awesome things you can do in Battlefield 1. Number 10, and this one is absolutely, completely unexpected. But you can play as a pigeon! And it actually does make a whole lot of sense because they used carrier pigeons to deliver messages in World War I, and DICE is always looking for ways to set their games apart from other people's games. It's really strange actually when the pigeon mode activates because it turns into sort of a weirdly serene experience. And when you just said the words Pigeon Mode Activate, which is what I just said without thinking about it, it's hard to imagine it's anything other than hilarious. It's not hilarious, it actually works really, really well. And it does a good job of sort of scaling back what you are feeling in the moment. Because a bird is not that concerned with what's going on other than just getting to where it's going. So you kind of see the battlefield from a completely different perspective. It's quieter, the music is serene, you're not being shot at because you're just a bird. I'm sure from time to time it happens, but probably a lot harder to hit you than it is to hit a person who's 50 feet away on the battlefield. It just comes off as a really different experience that the game is better for. Number nine, there is an absolutely tiny pistol that you can use. And it's not a joke pistol either, it's an actual real pistol. The 2mm Calibri is actually the smallest pistol that has been patented, and it was introduced in 1914 after having been designed four years earlier. It's funny because it literally looks like you're holding like a matchbox or something like a gun. Number eight, flares can be used to light people up. Now let's say you're in a dark area, or perhaps you're in a foggy area, or just some area where the visibility is fairly low. You can kind of make out your opponents, but not quite. It'd be easy to lose them if they move around a little bit. So what should you do? Why not fire a flare at them, light them on fire, and make them the easiest possible thing to keep track of? Someone running around because they're on fire is usually not hard to keep your eyes on. Although if you're doing it from a distance, I mean, that's pretty impressive because you can't use a crosshairs with it really, at least not in the way that you can with, say, every other gun, because it's obviously not meant for this. Well, supposedly not meant for this. Number seven, you can blow up a Zeppelin. Now, this is obviously not the first game you can blow up a Zeppelin in, however, but let's be honest, this is kind of the generation where everything actually works, like games work way better. Graphics are outstanding, physics are a hundred times better than ever before. And while we've experienced a lot of things that we probably never would have before thanks to this, blowing up a Zeppelin has not really been high on the priorities for physics and graphics and all that stuff. Well, in Battlefield 1, you'd better believe that Zeppelins have become a priority. World War 1 dealt with a lot of strange things by today's standards, and Zeppelins, I think, is probably one of the bigger ones in more ways than one. Not only are they absurd, but they're quite vulnerable, actually. And it's time for you to exploit that. Number six, there are armored trains in the game that are generally being called death trains. For the practical purpose of them, they're to move large amounts of weapons and munitions around. And, you know, was generally regarded as one of the more efficient ways of moving around huge caches of firepower. But that's historical. In the game, there are basically big tanks on tracks. Now, obviously, they're predictable as far as where they're going to be, so a counterattack can be made easy by the right people, but generally what you're dealing with is a bunch of high-powered turrets moving pretty fast in something that you can't ram. If somebody rams it with a vehicle, it's going to destroy the vehicle and kill whoever's inside it. Remember how I said it's kind of like a tank? One of the best strategies is anti-tank mines. It's a great vehicle that adds a lot of variation, and in all honesty, that seems to be a running theme for Battlefield 1. This seems to be one of the more varied war simulation first-person shooters that I've seen thus far. Number five, in one of the campaign missions, you actually respawn as a new person, a new soldier, somebody else. Now, in this mission, you're not taking control of the main character per se, but rather it uses it as an opportunity to show the cost of war. When you die, it flashes a name over it as well as a birth date and a death date and has various voiceovers talking about the cost of war. It actually is very effective in grounding it in a way that I think a game over screen doesn't. That being said, you're kind of stuck with that when you're playing as the main character, but if you die in this mission, it really says something to you more than just like, oh well, gotta restart. Number four, you can use a flamethrower, and it's, well, maybe not, again, the first appearance of a flamethrower in a game, and certainly not the first for a Battlefield game, 
This flamethrower is, well, let's just say the best one. And again, to bring it up the way I said before, it's essentially because this is the best version of the Battlefield format that DICE has ever put out. Best graphics, best physics, that applies to fire. Holy crap, the fire looks so good in this version of the game. It's affected by wind. It behaves a lot more like regular fire. You can light a room on fire, for instance, and people go in and go, oh crap. That's exactly what it feels like when you have something like that happen. It's like, oh geez, I just walked into, oh, I should have been paying closer attention because I'm burning to death. Number three, there's gas grenades, and to use them, you might want to use a gas mask. And this time around, the gas mask actually acts like you might expect it to. Whereas in previous Battlefield installments, sometimes it was purely just a cosmetic thing, and even in Battlefield Hardline, once you equipped it, you couldn't remove it, which was kind of strange because it did slightly restrict your vision. Not a lot, but still. This time, it actually acts like a gas mask would, you know, in an actual situation. If there's gas around, you put it on. If there's not gas around, you take it off. The gas also looks really cool. It reacts to wind just like the fire, and it's kind of important not to take damage from poison gas, so you might want to have this. Number two, and this is probably one of my absolute favorites, is that now planes take actual damage. And not like they have a health meter and you shoot them and they have less health. I mean like they model damage for real. You shoot a part of a plane and it may come off, for instance. And the plane ends up flying worse because of it. And really, I don't know if you've heard me talk about it with other games, but damaging environments and objects is one of my favorite things that developers can work on. And I hope we see more of it. Thank you, DICE, for including this in Battlefield 1. But really, number one, the most crazy yet awesome thing you can do in Battlefield one is just essentially what is the essence of a lot of why people like Battlefield, and that's the bizarre, epic, player-made moments. From a bunch of people dying in the exact same way in a weird sequence, like with bayonets, or running people down with a tank, the coolest stuff that happens, probably in Battlefield more than a lot of other franchises, is just what ends up happening. It's not intended stuff. DICE makes very well-made games, so it's a little bit less exploitable as far as bugs go, so people end up being very creative within the constraints of a well-working, well-designed game. And you might say, well, I don't know that I'd call that creative. I would say, how many Battlefield compilations have you watched? People are insane in these games, and it's awesome. What about Battlefield 1 has you the most interested? What can you not wait to be able to do? Or if you've played it already, what do you enjoy the most? Let's meet in the comments, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, and if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this one. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, at Falcon the Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Rank. Thanks.